So, factoring when A is greater than 1. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when we go back through our factoring techniques, yes? I'm going to explain. No, there's. I'm going to explain. No, that's going to remain the same. I'm going to explain. So, if you guys remember, when we were just dealing with factoring, right? When we were just dealing with factoring, um, what was the first thing we ever told you guys to do? First thing I told you to do. What do you want to do? Yeah, you said it. You want to take out the what? Take out the greatest common factor, right? Always, when looking into factoring, see if you can take out the greatest common factor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this problem first because I just wanted to explain again factoring. So remember factoring, what we did was we always looked to take the greatest common factor out. So here I can factor out a 2. So I'm left with 2x squared minus 3x plus 2, right? Then you can kind of factor that out. You don't need to really worry about it. Now what we can do is how do we factor? Remember the whole process of factoring was taking a trinomial, a, ter a polynomial with three terms, and writing it as a product of two factors, a product of two binomials. So how did we do that? Well, remember one way that I told you guys to do that is to set up a little diagram where you took A times C, and then you took B. Now, since I factored out this 2, I can just rewrite this as x squared minus 3x plus 2. I'll explain a little bit more why I, can do that, why I don't really care about that 2 right now. I, did, I factored it all out. So I have x squared minus 3x plus 2. Remember, everything can be formed in AX, plus BX, AX squared plus BX plus C. So A times C in this case is 2. And my b is negative 3. So on your homework, remember we worked on what two numbers multiply to give you 2, but add to give you negative 3. Right. Negative 1 and then negative 2. So what we did was these were two numbers that become our product. So we could write our trinomial as a product of its factors. Right? We can write it as a product. This was called factoring. If you wanted to check your work, did I do my factoring correctly? You can multiply by FOIL, right, or FOIL technique. You can multiply that back out to see if you got your answers, correct? All right. So we talked about factoring. Factoring is a technique because, ladies and gentlemen, when we get to an equation, right, remember, when we want to find the equation, we want to find the solutions, right? Or in a quadratic, we call, we, a lot of times we call these the roots. Exactly. So if I want to find the roots or the solutions, Previously, you guys just learned to do what? Add one to the other side, undo addition, undo subtraction, right? Or if you just had like an x squared, if I just said like x squared minus 4 equals 0, you add the 4, take the square root, right? But here, I have two x's. So I can't just simplify and solve like I used to. What we're going to do is we have to factor it. And the reason why we want to factor it is because I'll explain it in a second. But we have to factor this. So we learned other factoring techniques. This is pretty basic factoring technique, right? You just create the diamond and get through it. But when you have an a is greater than 0, you always want to look to first factor out that a. And here, can we factor out that negative 3? No. All right? So you can still solve the problem, though, in the similar fashion. And this is what you do. Still do your a times c. That's why the a times c never, never changes. a times c is going to be negative 24 b is going to be negative 10. So then I look at it, I say, what two numbers multiply to give me negative 24, but add to give me negative 10? Yes? Very good. So now, rather than rewriting it as a product, here's, what, here's the biggest mistake students make. They do it like this. Because that's what you kind of did over there, right? So students write it like this. And then they say, but some of you might be saying, why is that wrong? Remember, I told you guys, you can check your answer, right? This times this equals that. Does x times x give you negative 3x squared? No. Does negative 12 times 2 give you, to give you positive 8? No. So this is not the answer. So, well, I'm Mr. McLogan. How do you find the answer? Here's what you're going to do. Rather than setting it up as its two factors, we're going to rewrite the equation. Negative 3x squared minus 12x plus 2x plus 8 equals 0. 
what you guys notice is these two, those two values that I took, add to give you your middle term. Does negative 12x plus 2x give you negative 10x? Yes. OK, now why would I do that, right? That might be, in, why would you want to do that? Because now, what I've, by doing that, now what I've done is now I can factor out the GCF out of two terms. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it up and say factor out the GCF out of these two terms and factor out out of those two terms. OK? So what, can I factor out the GCF out of these two terms? Yes, what's the, fact, what's the GCF out of these two? Three. Negative 3x. And when I factor out a negative 3x, what am I left with? x plus 4. And then can I factor out the GCF out of these two? Yeah, you can factor out a 2. And when I factor out a 2, I'm left with an x plus 4. Now, gets a little more, we're still not done because we still don't have this as a multiplication problem. But what you guys can see is, can I factor out something else? Do they share something else again? X plus 4. So now I can rewrite, now I can factor out the x plus 4. And when I factor out the x plus 4, what's left over? Negative 3x plus 2 equals 0. Then what you guys notice is now have I created this to a multiplication problem of two factors? Yes, now it's written as a multiplication factor of two factors. Since you have two numbers multiplied to give you 0, you can now say that they either one of them can equal 0. So therefore, your answer is x equals negative 4 and x equals 2 thirds. Whew, perfect timing, slow it in. We'll go back over it a lot more next class period. Um, ladies and gentlemen,